Welcome to the Business Miracles Podcast. I'm Heather Dominic, founder of businessmiracles.com. Since 2010, I've been training highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders from around the globe to work less while making more impact and income by doing things differently. I'm so glad you've joined me. Listen in and get ready for a shift in the way you view yourself, your work, your life. A business miracle. This is A Course in Business Miracles, episode number 107, Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership with Business Miracles community curator, coach, and member Lorna Lang. Welcome to this special series of the Business Miracles podcast, Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership, where you'll be hearing real stories from real highly sensitives creating real success. On today's episode, I am thrilled, as always, to spend some time talking to Business Miracles community curator, coach, and member Lorna Lang. Lorna and I have a very special relationship. I've been her business mentor for over 10 years. She has been a member of the Business Miracles team for over five years. And throughout all of our time together, our collaborative relationship is constantly fueled by our mutual value of personal growth and development. In addition to being a very valued member of the Business Miracles team and community, Lorna is a highly sensitive leader in her own right and an inner yoga coach. Her own business focuses on helping others to create more life satisfaction, and she simultaneously delights in being a part of the Business Miracles team, supporting highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders to create more income and impact. My intention is that you'll receive value and inspiration from this inside peek into the workings of our 10 plus years unique relationship and the ways we've evolved over the years as mentor mentee, as well as collaborative team members. You'll hear some of what it absolutely means to be not only a highly sensitive leader, but also part of the Business Miracles mission driven team. Enjoy. Lorna, welcome to Inside Highly Sensitive Leadership Series as part of the Business Miracles podcast. I am so excited to kick this series off with you, 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 you. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited too and and honored to be your first interviewee in this way. (laughs) I'm really looking forward to this conversation. Of course, you and I have so many conversations in so many different ways, but this is an opportunity to allow others to have a little bit of an inside peek to, you know, our relationship and the ways that we've evolved over the years, our work together, and what it really means to be a highly sensitive leader as part of a highly sensitive leadership team and you know, doing the work side by side. So I'd love for you to start just by sharing, you know, a little bit in your own words, that's not necessarily official bio words of, you know, our journey, our relationship, you and I have really known each other for quite a long time now. And there's been some beautiful evolution as part of our connection. So My goodness, how did it all start, Lorna? Well, it started back in 2010 (laughs) when we actually first connected. I'm sure it was in process way before that, too. Yes. But I had just opened a wellness studio where I was doing personal training and a lot of yoga work with people. A year before, I heard about you from actually someone, oh gosh, It was like someone who went to yoga teacher training with me, an acquaintance of hers or a life coach of hers on Facebook said, Heather Dominic is doing this, you know, this free call about, I don't know, something enticing that I was like, I need that help with my business. (laughs) Wow. So I signed up for a free teleclass. That's what I think it was called back then. So that, that was in 2010. Right. And I joined 
Gosh, your business wasn't even business miracles then. No, it wasn't. It was miracles. <laughs> that's right. It was energy rich coaching. And I'm yeah. pretty sure the first program that you joined was called a business boot camp. That's and right. <laughs> I think that name should should really state that I was only discovering that I was highly sensitive right around that time that you and I first connected. Exactly, because that's that's not kind of the term or energy that we use these days at all. Not at all, not at all, no. But I was fortunate to get on that call and sign up mm-hmm. for the boot camp, which was, I think, about four months. And uh, at the end of that, just decided that it made sense to keep working with you, doing some more one-on-one work. I joined one of your programs that was a combination of one-on-one and group work and um, just have stayed with it since then and uh, both working on my own business and just developing as you developed and found out more about highly sensitive I think there were maybe one or two times where I thought oh I'm kind of complete this program and then you you brought the next level in I was like oh my gosh like I need to be here this is where I'm supposed to be Yes, I would agree. This is where we are supposed to be. There's definitely a sacred contract here. And I just so appreciate how we keep showing up to fulfill it. And I think really, you know, what you spoke about in terms of where I am always, you know, looking to have my finger on the pulse of what is really most needed for those that I'm serving. And that definitely extends to our team as well. And really being willing to to consistently be in that evolutionary process, right? Like not being afraid of creating. And I think that's absolutely a key in regards to highly sensitive leadership, because one of our strengths as highly sensitives is we are creative by nature. And I often get a lot of questions, and I don't know, maybe you do as well from the community about that strength, you know, the the highly sensitive strength of creativity and I'll hear things like, oh, but I don't paint and I don't, you know, I don't draw or I don't dance. And, but creative as a strength is, you know, such a broad term, truly. And I would say that that is absolutely a a process that we are involved in consistently as a team and, you know, and again, in service to the community of highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders. So I'd love for you to maybe just share a little bit about, you know, your experience coming on to the team and then what it's like to be a part of a team that is always evolving and in a, you know, creative process of improvement and betterment. What's, what's your personal experience there? Well, I came on first as just in the business coach role, yes, which has expanded since then. And I, you know, the memory that's coming to mind right now is one of the small in-person gatherings that we had where it was maybe the first time I was on the team. And um, I believe you were, you were teaching on the unique selling process that you yes. developed for highly sensitive. And at the end of each day, it was like a two or three day event. The team who was there gathered together and did an assessment and debrief of the day. Yes. And and we've done some of these before, like maybe by telephone. That was before we were working on Zoom. And I always have this tendency to see like, where can we improve? Right. <laughs> and I remember at this particular event one evening, I was just like, something inside of me just said like, oh, you're always like finding places where we're, we need to improve. So like, I was just like, oh, I don't see anything. It's good. And you were like, hmm, I always, you know, I always really like and rely on you to see like, where can we improve and evolve? And it was so just true. Like, almost like the sun bursting through my chest, through my heart. Oh, so it's like, oh. wow, I, she wants me to be who I am. Yes. And yes. I'm getting chills right now just talking about it. I don't think I've ever shared that with you. No, but you haven't. I'm hearing this for the first time. Yeah, it was totally a call to like be yourself. We need you. This is this is what it's about. 
And so I've really found, so in terms of being creative, that's one of my ways of being creative. I yes. have an ability to kind of be able to zoom in, in and out and see how things connect together and how what you we do in one place impacts something else. And then yes. you and I both share that desire for like continuous improvement. And so it's just been a beautiful ride into positivity in mm. that way. Mm. So we're not doing it just to say that wasn't very good, but we're like, this worked. And here's an opportunity where it that's, can be right. Better. that's right. And, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I would really agree with you that you and I both really hold a, a just very innate personal value of commitment to growth and evolution. And I think definitely, you know, your yogic study and your, you know, personal commitment to that path is a real demonstration of that. And then similarly, you know, my commitment to my study of A Course in Miracles, and you and I have talked many times about how there's actually crossovers and yeah. intersections, you know, between your mastery study and, and again, the, the yogic world and, and mine and in the course. And I just really appreciate that we both hold that value. And, um, you know, I've come to the point where I feel so privileged because this is just the way that we naturally work. Now, I mean, especially after all these years, you know, you and I and the team in general, that sometimes I forget that other people don't work this way, <laughs> you know? It's important because from so going back to when I first met you, but like I, I had this beautiful studio that I had opened and, you know, it was doing okay, had, had some clients, but there were times where I was sitting in the sunlight, streaming in through the window and feeling all alone. Yes, yes. Like, I'm the only one who really cares about this. I live in a part of the country that's pretty isolated, pretty blue collar. At that time, right. no one was doing yoga in right. the county I lived in. And I just had this sense of really wanting to collaborate with others who, in a business way, at that time, I thought yoga, who were like the where the creative energy is exciting and ideas flow and there's like all that creativity and just that positive feeling rather than feeling alone. I'm not a person who gets lonely. So it was right. different from that. It wasn't right. like, oh, I'm so lonely, but just like, it would be so fun to be in this collaborative, creative business yes. energy. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I was going to say. It's not loneliness so much as lack of collaboration right mm -hmm. versus you know exactly. the yeah versus the energy that that cooks up through collaboration and you know in while you're speaking I'm definitely hearing you like reference strengths and we really are a strengths based team that's definitely one of my key philosophies in you know working with and and leading the business miracles team not all of us on the team are highly sensitive so we do have highly sensitives the coach team is is absolutely highly sensitive so we have our highly sensitive strengths but then also within the team we all have our personal strengths and for the last couple of years now you know maybe even longer but we've been working with our personal strengths as a team. And mm -hmm. I say probably I've refined it in the last couple of years where we've identified, you know, where each of us as a team member has a lead strength, um, a major strength and a minor strength that we work with. So I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that, because I think that really speaks to that, that moment that you had when the sun was bursting out of your chest, which I'm yeah. like so delighted to hear about was me recognizing your personal strengths and wanting that to be a part of the team because I'm not interested in, in being in a team where, you know, I'm at the top and everyone else is at the bottom. I'm interested in that collaboration that you were speaking of. And really the only way to do that, to have a very full as well as effective collaborative experience is where every member of the team, their strengths fit 
together like pieces to a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and definitely your strengths are, are, are a key part of the puzzle. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit, like, what is it like for you knowing that, you know, who you are, the strengths that you personally hold are a significant part to the puzzle that moves the, the mission of highly sensitive leadership forward? Yeah, well, it's, it's very satisfying. Mm. It's, it's very fulfilling. And also more recently, I'm going to kind of hijack your question. Sure, <laughs> a little go for it. Direction. Yeah, no um, worries. This is what I do, right? <laughs> yes, I love it. So actually what I'm seeing so much by being able to claim and own my own strengths is that now I'm able to lean into and trust other people's strengths on the team. Mm. So that, so one thing I really love about being on the team and working with you is that it's not just we identify our strengths one time and now we're working, you know, in, in that way, just focused in a certain way, but at least once a year and often twice a year, we are redefining what do I want to focus Mm. now on in terms of my strengths. And so we're actually doing this for a team planning event we have next week. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I really recognize but that by being able to trust my strengths and see what the other members on the team strengths are, yeah. that I can let go of some of the stress or sometimes the worry, the concern that not everything is going to be taken care of because I do have that high level of responsibility and because right. I tend to see the whole picture. And now I just feel like I can kind of melt into really focusing on one or two key areas and know that the rest is being taken care of by people who have more strengths in like the organizing area sure, um, or more strengths in the execution. Like I'm an right. idea gal. <laughs> right, right. I, yes. I, I get a lot done. I get a lot done, but I'm not so much the person who, who's the strongest with technology, for instance. Right, right. right. And so to be able to trust that there are other members on the team who will take care of technology-related issues allows me then to really focus in and fully serve in the way that I can best. Yeah, yeah, I think that really says it. Um, so there's a real freeing up that that happens. And, you know, it's it sounds- exciting. It's fun. It is exciting and fun. I really agree with you. And it sounds more simple, right? Like, but if we take that, that phrase of like, then I can trust, and that's a big deal. You know, there's so many organizations, so many associations, companies that there's the exact opposite, right? There's such an impermeation of lack of trust that it it definitely creates, you know, friction, it slows things down. And, you know, we are by far, you know, like we, we definitely have issues that we have to face and we have to manage and we have to deal with and we have to assess and we have to course correct just because we operate from our strengths doesn't mean that everything just, you know, is always flowing down river. But I do, you know, really believe in and, and see on a consistent basis that even when we hit those bumps as a team, because we do have that enough of that trust, right? That's really weaves the web between each of the team members that mm-hmm. we're able to move through those bumps, you know, more easily than, than if we didn't. That's my sense anyway. Do you agree? Yeah, I would. And I'm, I mean, we are, we consciously cultivate celebrating each other's strengths. Yes, yes. And so it, it, it isn't at all like that. I got to watch out for my own back. It's rather like I'm being seen and celebrated for this so I can be even stronger in it. Yeah. As well as, it's amazing to me, like on our weekly team meetings, we start them out by saying out loud what my strengths are, right. what I'm focusing on, and a specific way that I use that strength in this last week to help fulfill A Course in Business Miracles mission. That's right. 
That's right. It's and that's amazing. the way that it, it is amazing. And that's the way that the strengths strengthen and then therefore the team strengthens. But again, it's like, sometimes I have to remind myself like how privileged we are because it's just so unique to work this way and to have this kind of high level, high functioning collaborative experience as highly sensitive, but also as women, like we are a team of 10 women. And like you said, we are celebrating each other and acknowledging each other for our strengths weekly, if not sometimes daily in the way that we're digitally connected in between team meetings. So yeah. What's really cool too, I think is that we're not just like hoarding this privileged way of working together, but we're sharing it with the community as well. Yes. The members in our community who have team or who are looking at creating team or they're, you know, they're in an organization where they're interacting with other team members that we're sharing how all of this can be brought in into their own work in a way so that that's works exactly that right. That yeah. Culture. It's exactly right. We're paying it forward as fast as possible, for sure. So as per usual with the Heather and Lorna connection, I could just keep talking (laughs) Um, (laughs) and we're coming up on time. So, but before we wrap, I would love for you to speak just a little bit about your curator role Mm -hmm. because it's such a unique position. I mean, you don't necessarily see that in a lot of companies and I really created the position with you in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and it expanded your, you know, when we moved you or expanded you from, you know, only part of the coach team to also community curator, not only did we, again, expand your, your team role, but I felt like we were able to really then maximize your strengths. So I'd love for you to just share just a little bit about, you know, what stepping into that role was like for you and the evolution of that role and you know what it's what is brought to you personally so on the one hand stepping into the role felt like coming home Mm. it felt like because a lot of what i do is working with the teachings and trainings that you deliver and then curating them editing them to create a uh, like an evergreen version of that training so it's not just it happened one time live and has gone away, but members, current members and the new members who join can have access to those teachings and trainings, including creating transformation assignments of really not just listening to or reading the training, but also implementing the essence of the training, putting it into action. Right. Um, So that part for me, like really felt like coming home and almost like almost like a little bit sneaky, like I get to get paid (laughs) for immersing myself in these teachings and really getting it and seeing how it could help someone else even more to do some of this curation. Yes, yes. It feels, you know, like almost a little bit like, oh, maybe Heather doesn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Even though that's totally what I'm supposed to be doing. Totally. And, And then on the other hand, it has stretched in a really lovely way my leadership abilities Mm. Mm. because as part of the being community curator I'm I'm looking out for what do the members need right and that intersects not only with the coach team and you in terms of direct service to the to the members in our community but also how does our back office our core team deliver and uh, create systems that are, you know, ideally sort of transparent to the members so that they can just get what they need and work with what they need. And so I see where there's sometimes a need for improvement or it's working really good and I see an awesome up level. Right. And so the leadership stretch part is communicating that. Mm-hmm. And communicating it in a way where I don't go into my shadows about right. either feeling like, oh, now I have to do that all myself and getting right. overwhelmed mm-hmm. or feeling like, you know, if someone's thinking, well, who does Lorna think she is? Right, right. So I've really learned through your, you know, consistent feedback and support of me how to navigate that and do it in a way that's 
through my strengths and also can be received by the team the way it's meant and that we all feel like we're doing it again in service to the mission and service to the members that we're serving in the community. Yeah. Yeah. And then we and then we can all celebrate also that it happened. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I think that's really well said. You know, and I appreciate you speaking to the the you know your own process of you know being stretched and leadership evolution and and communication because that's such a key to highly sensitive leadership Mm -hmm. is learning how to effectively communicate, you know, because we process differently. Right. And so you're, you're exactly right. Those shadows will come up the overwhelm, the over responsibility, over protection, all of it. And yeah, it's such a rewarding process. Like you said, where we get to celebrate when it's when it's working really well, and I think just the last thing that I want to highlight in regards to your role as community curator is, you know, there's just so much that I love and appreciate about you. But I, in the spirit of collaboration, I always so so value and appreciate your particular perspective on what's going on in the community what the community needs, because you and I see things differently. Mm -hmm. We see things differently from our various strengths. And, you know, and and I believe that they, they work really well together. And in the same way that you were speaking, that you don't have to hold everything. When I know that your eyes are on the community, just as much as my eyes are on the community, but you're going to see things that perhaps I wouldn't necessarily see or see first then it really feels like we've got that, you know, like full umbrella of service in the name of of those highly sensitive entrepreneurs and leaders who are in the Business Miracles community, which is also unique. You know, many programs are really about more about what's going to be of service to the person who's offering the programs. And our perspective is always about what's going to be of service for those who are in the programs. And I know that, you know, you're aligned with that. I know we're on the same page with that. And again, I know you've got my back and your strengths are seeing things that I don't see. And, and I just, I'm so appreciative of it. It's just, you know, such a value, such a joy. So thank you. No, thank you. And I think it's super fun that we've evolved the program from what we've seen works to having weekly live training now where we can really incorporate very quickly what we're seeing is needed and offering that and, you know, just even seeing what's going on because of the season with our members. Right. (laughs) Yes. School or beginning of the new year. So that's right. It's very. mm, like I'm just feeling this grounded feeling like my lower chakra is like yes solid in grounded and and full yeah yeah beautiful I would agree well thank you so much Lorna thanks for kicking off our inside highly sensitive leadership series and being willing to be on the ride and on the journey together I'm so grateful thank you Heather me too All right. Beautiful. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Thank you for being a part of this Business Miracles podcast episode and for beginning to dip your toe into the journey of highly sensitive leadership training. If you are ready to truly use your sensitivities as strengths in all parts of your work and life, I invite you to connect for a one-on-one chat. You will experience being deeply listened to and together we'll get a sense of whether the highly sensitive leadership training programs are the best next step for you and your highly sensitive journey at this time. Just go to www.claritycall.com to schedule a conversation. We so look forward to connecting with you. Talk to you soon.